you're sitting there thinking to yourself, this could never happen to you, aren't you? You could never snap and kill 21 people. Well, that's what I thought two years ago. So what makes you any different? Why did you do it? Everyone has been asking me that. Really? Is that the question you want to be asking? Yes. I mean, it's not a normal thing to do. You know that, right? Of course. So why do something so abnormal? Are you asking me why I'm not normal? No, I'm asking what led you to commit that particular abnormal act. There we go. It's not the person that is straying from what is considered convention. It is the action itself. Yes. So, simply put, why do it? Okay, what happens if you take a dog and you push him into a corner, pushing him up into the wall with no way to escape? It bites. Is that what happened to you? You felt pushed into a corner and then, according to you, you bit the people pushing you. No, I'm not a dog. I didn't bite right away. That would be very primal of me, wouldn't it? We are animals, yes. That we have so much more than physical attacks to get ourselves out of difficult situations. Now imagine if that dog could speak. Then he would tell you to back the fuck up, right? I did not just bite at the first chance I got. I tried everything. Believe me, I know depression. I know what it's like when the world kicks you while you're down. But I don't go out and kill people. So what you're saying is that I'm different. I handled my problems differently than other people would. Yes, you did. In comparison to other normal people, I am a monster. I did not say that. Yes, but you think so, right? It's not my job to speculate. It's not your job? I don't care. If I'm going to do this interview with you, I need complete honesty and I need transparency. Are you asking me if I think you are a monster? Yes. No, I don't. I think you are a person with a lot of problems. I think that there's something wrong with you psychologically. Okay, so what would I act like if I was right psychologically? I don't know. Exactly. But I know what people are saying about me. They're calling me a monster. They're asking themselves, how could this happen? And I'll tell them how this could happen. Those fucking hypocrites. They create this society where everyone is expected to behave in this certain way. And if you don't, then you're cast out. You're not allowed back in unless you behave exactly like they want you to behave. So by calling me a monster, they're casting me out. They created the society that made me this way. They cast me as the villain in their world. And if they cast me as the villain, then I'm sure going to play that part really fucking well. But people started calling you a monster after you did what you did. No, 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 no. People have been calling me things long before that. Loser, psychopath, crazy. I would theorize that by constantly calling me those things, they made me those things. But why would they call you that? People don't usually call each other things without there being a reason for it, good or not. I'm a human. I made mistakes. And I'm not talking about killing people here. I'm talking about other stuff. Like what stuff? Oh, here we go. Now you're getting the juicy stuff you want, right? Well, I can admit I wasn't always the best boyfriend. You're talking about your girlfriend, Lisa Kirkland. Yeah. I read the court ruling. Do you want to know what it says? No, I know what it says. So what happened? You cheated on me. I'm sorry, I really am. Why? Why did you do it? I just, we haven't had sex for a long time, and I so need... So we haven't had sex in a long time? Then let's just go out and fuck someone else, right? Just let me speak. No! No, you don't get to fucking speak. I'm sorry. Yeah, you've said that a hundred fucking times. 
Do you think that it's a magical word that by saying sorry it all just goes away? What do you want from me? I want you to feel pain. I want you to feel as much pain as I do right now. I am. I'm really fucking sad. <laughs> Are you sad? Are you sad, Andres? <laughs> You don't get to be the victim here. Don't do that. I will do whatever I want. Don't mock me. Why does it make little Andre sad when I mock him? Can you just be a fucking grown-up for fuck's sake? Yeah, turn it around on me. That's great. You are such a grown-up. Can't take responsibility for your own actions. I am. I'm sorry for the hundredth fucking time. What more do you want from me? Wow, you're incredible. You, you're a psycho. You are literally the definition of a psychopath. It's like you don't even know a thing about how the world sees you. Every single time I bring you to meet someone, they get intimidated by you. People are scared of you. I am scared of you. Why? I've never done anything to make you scared. Oh, you have. What? Huh? Have I ever hit you? You know, people come up to me when you're not around asking why I'm together with you. And every time I see Struggle to find an answer. Stop trying to fucking hurt me, you fucking bitch. Are you hurt now? Good. I want you to be. Okay, now I'm leaving. Yeah, just run the problems. You're so mature. What do you want from me, you fucking bitch, fucking whore? No, go. Just leave. Okay, do you want me to leave? I want you to drop dead. Right, because I cheated. That's fucking stupid. No, because the world would be better off without you. All you do is make people feel awkward. <laughs> Two years ago, Andreas beat up his girlfriend. She was beaten to a pulp and got a restraining order against him. Is Andreas truly the monster we take him to be? What about Meriwether? Yes? You said they made you do it. I never said they made me. You did. You said exactly that. To quote, you said, Meriwether, it's their fault, they made me do it. Okay, maybe I did, but I'll take responsibility for what I've done, okay? So Meriwether did not have anything to do with this? No, Is but... there anything you want to tell me, Andreas? Come closer. I'd rather not. Sorry. Just... Okay, in my room, in my apartment, there is a flash drive. It's hidden inside the lamp in the ceiling. On that flash drive is a recording. Listen to it. The voice on that clip belongs to Paul McDermott, the owner of the Meriwether Company. Just listen to the clip and come back and see me afterwards. As I left the cell block and walked home, I found myself confronted with two options. Could I really trust this man? This man who recently murdered over 20 people? Or should I just write this off as the ramblings of a crazy person? After all, something is wrong with him. Maybe I should stop this before I go insane myself. Just find another story to work on. Yes, that would be the smart thing to do. But then, as I visited a coffee shop on my way home from the prison, the strangest thing happened. I felt watched. I had done from the moment I left the prison. While I was ordering my regular sugar-free vanilla latte with extra syrup, a man came up to me. This man was really good looking. Tall, muscular body, black thin hair and brown eyes. He was just my type. On the surface, it seemed he was just flirting with me. That happened from time to time, but he seemed very forthright. I sat with him for my coffee. He almost seemed too nice, like it was an act. He asked me questions, personal questions about my job, what I was working on, where I had just been. I could not shake the feeling that something was wrong. I couldn't shake it, so I decided to make a stop on the way home. Andreas Johnson's old apartment was boarded up with police tape, but I would just be quickly in and out. In his bedroom, inside his old, rustic ceiling light, was the flash drive. Just like he had said. I plugged it into my computer. Do you really think this will stop me? What are you doing? Give me that phone!
That was definitely Paul McDermott, the CEO of Meriwether. But what is going on? What is happening on that clip? You can feel it too, right? Something is not right. 